So why did we went into the language? Because all of you know that also on each occasion we speak about how language conceals reality. How language is not in service, but in disservice. And of the two principal sources of this, now you uh, will understand what the term means, of what comprises the field of samskara, or samskaric field, which is the field of psychic, made of psychic impressions. Up until the psychic impressions have their sway over our mind, we cannot live fully that what is our birthright. This is the genius of the Patanjali Sutras. And from the two principal sources of the samskaric field and its gripping emphasis, its gripping presence in our life, as has been mentioned on the first day, I think, first evening, that comes from the what is inherited as whole set of instinctual responses, and that what comes as a result of education, a result of belonging to culture. So these are cultural, culturally informed impressions. Of the two, surprise, surprise, the instinct, the, that what belongs to the instinctual part actually doesn't pose that much problem. problem. In other words, what makes us animals in being humans is not a problem. It's what makes us humans being humans is the problem. Because what makes us humans is the language. What makes us animals is not imprisons us. There are even wild pockets in spiritual traditions where one actually meant to go deeper into the domain of the instinctual, so as to rediscover. And only few beings, beings of culture, usually highly educated, made that their business because they were not afraid. It's a highly forbidden territory. Read Jung. You will, you will understand why. The domain of psychology deals with that. Anything below, below the level of the chest is a jungle full of, full of creatures. And this is where we come from. We all come from the jungle. So this is where artists, poets, right? Well, philosophers by virtue, but Artists often want to go to explore. One has to be equipped with tremendous degree of psychological maturity already to do that job, because one can easily be derailed. Jungles have that uh, <laughs> jungle is a jungle. It gobbles one in, gobbles one down cannot make one step there without really paying attention to where you're going, what you're doing. Because we're a real jungle. You know, when you travel to Costa Rica, when you go to Central America, you go to the paths which are treated by chemicals so that tourism doesn't suffer unwanted consequences. I've lived in Costa Rica, I know what I'm talking about. You arrive and you're given this villa with the trail of monkeys and all everything is looks so pristine and the jungle immediately here. Why do you think that? It's all treated. They walk around, spray meticulously. So crawlies of all kinds do not venture in. So the instinctual part is apparently not that much of a problem, but the language is. This is why the practice of mona, Sanskrit term for silence, is a very unique 
and not easy to practice because in our day and age it's like maybe one full day one can do that but beyond that it's like you need to take holiday take a real break and Mona is not not speaking the true practice of Mona is not you cannot say I am not going to speak on Monday but I'll be fully available on WhatsApp So that's not the Mona. Or I will go for a week in my cottage somewhere and only read. I will zip it. But that's not Mona. Because Mona is a true abstinence from speech, which means also not receiving speech in a written form. I will tell you something. On the fourth day, you begin to go wild. Things begin to get really strange. On the fifth day, it feels like a threshold. You either have to speak or language begins to go through the first stage of deconstruction. And if you are given to that longer, you will be in for profound insights. You will see how nothing, absolutely nothing, is within the domain of reach of language. Experience it freeing itself. And then you realize that every term, absolutely every term, is a calcified, or rather an attempt to calcify something which actually a flowing thing. Or it could happen as a a result of profound unfoldment of the goddess. Because the goddess herself, Kundalini, Kundalini's other name is Vak, the more ancient term for the power was that, Vak, which is the goddess of speech. So Kundalini presides over the, all the letters and all the sounds. So, in some cases, it is granted that that knowledge is unveiled within. So, beyond the practice of mourning, beyond the practice of self-imposed silence, because that is self-imposed silence, with some of us it may happen spontaneously. It's just no desire to speak, no propensity, and no need to speak or communicate. But with the unfoldment of Kundalini, it can happen because the time and space is rendered. For those of you who have read about this, or who have heard me speaking about this, let alone have worked with the Kundalini course, you might remember when we spoke about the structure of the medium channel. Sushumna. So when Kundalini enters Sushumna, this is where a different reality altogether is being experienced. Reality beyond space and time. Because space and time is in the Sushumna, flows differently. I uh, don't know how many of you have read the canonical autobiography of a yogi by Paramahamsa Yogananda, but somewhere he mentions that in the book, that Kundalini travels in Sushumna with the speed of light. This is an interesting thing. Did any, anyone read that book? No? Yeah? Let's go. Okay. It's classic. I mean, come on, it's a classic, right? It's a classic. I mean, it's a tremendously entertaining book, right? Tremendously entertaining. But there are these passages, there are these, and they're sometimes they just, um, they just come out, came out in, in the most casual manner. So it's not like he prepares the reader, you know, like, sharpen up your act, get your cup of tea, now I'm going to say something very important. No, he just will be talking about this saint, that saint, uh, wandering around, hanging out here, there, and suddenly, like, this paragraph, it's just 
Hang on, did I just read that? You go, but are you sure? Wow. And this whole concept of the diagram, Kundalini going up the chakras is then in the human body, falls away, falls apart. It travels in Sushumna with the speed of light, consuming vast terrains of time and space. Because Sushumna is not, Sushumna is not inside human body. Or even if that is written repeatedly in yogic or even like let alone New Age books. So going back now to this meanderings to where we've left it yesterday. So for us to proceed, this is just to say that there's no way, A, there's no way to um, get away from using Sanskrit terms. Sorry, folks. You know, any study you would do uh, of any other tradition, that would have to happen. So I don't want even sounding as if I'm giving the um, it's like almost uh, uh, there's a tone of, an, an, uh, of a disclaimer, of an apology. No, it's a tough titi. We have to rise to that. You know, it's like you, wanna, you want milk? That's all we have. <laughs> so, and yeah, it, at times it can, it can, you know, it can be sore and cracked and painful, but it flows. So these terms are important. Language has an, has an upper hand. Always remember that. Being aware of one's speech is a, a distinctive sign of evolved consciousness. Unawareness of one's speech is a sign of uh, consciousness is in a state of slumber. 